Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Tempest Knives Microburst. This is a prototype. I wanna say this here real quick. The prototype has D2 steel. The production version, if you pre-order this, uh, will come in 14C28N, which is, in my opinion, an absolute upgrade. I like 14C28N's balance a little better. There's also going to be a couple of other changes, but I have the prototype here uh, that I'm going to share with you guys today. Uh, the pre-order should be open at the time that you're watching this video. I think, in any case, I will still link his website. No matter when you're watching this, I'll still have the uh, website and the uh, listing linked down in the description so you guys can check it out. Thanks so much to Casey Spiron for sending us in. That's uh, Casey Spiron of Knives Fast, the designer of this knife. Uh, sent me the prototype so I could check it out. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Who is the OEM for this knife? Kubi is making these knives out of China. Um, which, uh, you know, the price on this I think is is reasonable. We'll talk more about that. Um, but this feels very Kubi-esque. And by that, I mean it feels of good quality, especially, you know, for the price point. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here, it's got a little bit more height to it, but it is actually a little bit shorter than the Rat 2. Let's put it up against the Spyderco Para 3. I think this most closely... Uh, you know, stacks up against the pair of three. It is a little bit shorter, um, but the hand positions are not exactly the same, but they are similar. Like the idea, the ergonomic idea of this knife is very similar to the pair of three. Your choke up point uh, and, you know, where you can get your, your hands behind the edge, right? It's It's got some similar lines uh, uh, for your, you know, just ergonomically is what I'm saying. Uh, it's obviously a different knife though. Uh, let's put it up against the Demco 80 20.5. There you go. Um, what else we got? How about, uh, let's finish off here with the Benchmade bug out. I don't know that we really need to do, uh, any more size comparisons. How is the action on this guy? It's good. Kubi does a nice action. Um, just a little bit of encouragement. We'll say he has mentioned that he's going to p possibly be moving the thumb studs. He said a little bit forward. I'm going to assume that means further down the blade, which is I don't know. On some designs, I want it up higher, but I, I think down here for how he's got tuned, the detent might be a little, uh, how he's got the detent tuned might be a little bit better. What I would suggest is to not make this so sharp. These little ledges here, I mean, this is a pretty narrow thumb stud, and we've got some pretty aggressive 90 degree angles on those ledges. A good thumb stud, I always use the Ontario Rat uh, 1 and 2 as an example for a great thumb stud, right? They do a good job of not sticking out too far past the rim. They don't have to stick out past, but they're nice and rounded off, right? Even the ledges are just, they're so gradual, right? These are pretty aggressive ledges, and I gotta be honest, it's a little bit sharp on the finger. I don't like tiny thumb studs. I think they should be a little bit wider, and they can be, um, because we have a nice roomy forward choil here, and uh, even making these a little bit fatter or moving them down even um, is not going to uh, change anything when you're using it. So that would be my suggestion. As it sits, it's okay. It's just a little bit uncomfortable to deploy it, but it is tuned properly. The action is nice. It's very smooth, etc. No double clutch, right? You can easily do the drop down to the thumb and then turn it and let it glide into the closed position. So that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's about exactly the same. These are slightly contoured, which is nice. I like that. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here this is actually more compact than the Para 3. Uh, not quite as tall, even at, at its tallest point, right? Uh, closed up, nice compact size. So it really shouldn't be that much of a problem. Um, let's take a look at the inside here real quick. We have nested and milled steel liners. Those liners are definitely steel. Uh, there are other parts of this knife that are titanium, but the uh, liners are absolutely steel. Um, and then, like I said, we're going to be looking at 14C28N for the blade steel, and we're looking at micarta uh, for the handle scale material. Let's go ahead and weigh it. I'm going to guess this weighs about three and a quarter. Yep, 3.25. Now, I didn't uh, measure it. <laughs> which is something I should have done. I just realized, I was like, I can't talk about ratios because I haven't measured it. So 
we're going to go ahead and measure this. Overall length is coming in at 7 inches. Blade length is coming in at 3 inches. Cutting edge is coming in at 2.75. So, 3 inch blade, 2.75 inches of cutting edge, and once again, 3.25 ounces of weight. I was really close there. That's actually pretty good ratios. Um, this is not going to be cumbersome to the average person, and the balance on this thing is very good, right behind the pivot, right where you want it. So that's nice. I don't have an issue with that. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. T8 is most likely where we're going to be here. T8 pivot, T8 body screws, T8 pocket clip screw, two on each side. That's the way to do it. Casey knows what he's doing. Easy disassembly. That's the right size heads. I can't complain about any of that. That's fine. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness here. Blade stock thickness, I'm going to guess that's 120, 120 thousandths, Ooh, 123. Okay, so it's probably 125 and the calipers are just off. All right, let's move into the meat and potatoes here. This is designed to be a nice, lightweight, compact EDC style knife with uh, an emphasis on ergonomic comfort. You can absolutely choke back here and be okay, and you can choke up and be okay. You can also get your finger up here on the nose of the blade, right, which is what I like. This is a very good overall EDC profile. I mean, you can see it right away. You don't have to be a, <laughs> you don't have to be a knife reviewer like me. Oh, you don't have to <laughs> be touched by the golden light of knife re reviewer demigodness. I'm I'm trying to laugh at myself here because it does, what I'm saying is, is that this is, you know, you can look at this and go, this is absolutely 100% designed to be an economic, straightforward, utilitarian, compact, lightweight EDC folding knife, right? That is exactly what this is. He's, he's succeeded in doing that. It's not the first time that I have seen this general idea, right? There's a lot of companies making knives in this general territory. And there are a lot of knives that kind of paved the way for this to be refined and, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's good. I like it. This is a knife that I would carry and use, right? There's not a lot here to like you know, pick up an ooh and ah over, but I don't think that that was the idea. The idea was just to make something straightforward and utilitarian. Um, very comfortable. You can feel the wire clip, but the wire clip, you know, you can see it's it's radius all the way around. So it's really, you know, it's not going to be an uncomfortable thing. I always feel like these clips are just too long. I would like to see um, the knife world in general evolve to shorter pocket clips. Um, you know, I think that there are some situations for some people that might call for a longer, more secure clip, but I think the vast majority of us, especially the people looking to pick something like this up, um, just a shorter, a shorter clip in general, um, I think, um, is, uh, is all the way around better. And I think it will create less of a hotspot, but a, a lot of what I'm saying really does come down to preference though. I think I just like, um, uh, you know, one of my favorite things about the bug out is the size of the clip. It's just a lot smaller, and I just think it makes a lot more sense, right? But, um, or like the tactile uh, rock wall, like the clip on that one is really cool. But yeah, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with this at all. I'm comfortable back here, and surprisingly, I can get a full four finger grip on this guy, especially choked up. This is beautifully ergonomic, choked up. Edges are nicely chamfered down. There's nothing sharp about any of this. I mean, this is micarta, right? So it's it's going to be generally comfortable anyway. But yeah, um, really really nice. We have jimping that extends out to a reasonable spot. I mean, it, the jimping it should always be in relationship to where your index finger lands, right? Sometimes we have knives where the choke up point is way up here, but the jimping ends way back here and it's just weird. Sometimes we have knives where they're, you could, the jimping's way out here, but you're like an inch from the initial cutting edge and it's just, it's odd, right? It should, the, the amount of jimping, right, depends on the style of knife too and the, the you know, the, the use philosophy, right, from the designer. But it should complement where your index finger is. And this is done exactly right. This is fine. He could have extended out further, but it doesn't need to. Right here is just fine. You're locked in. Uh, we have a, I'm going to call this a, <laughs> it's a, I, think, I, I think the safe way anymore is just to say modified behind whatever it is that you're going to classify the blade. Because no matter what you say about the blade, even if it is the most obvious drop point blade in the entire world, you're still going to have 10 people claiming that it is some oddball, you know, very specific thing or whatever, right? So uh, modified sheep's foot, I, I don't know, right? You could, that's that's what I'm seeing here. 
And this is about, you know, as ideal as it gets for just generic day-to-day -day EDC stuff. Uh, behind the edge, it gets nice and thin. This is the, the way to go. This is what people like to see, right? Assuming that the 14C28N is going to be properly heat treated. Got a little swedge up here just to keep it from looking like nothing, right? I mean, it's not, it, it's flat ground. Let me make sure here. Yeah, it's flat ground. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes they get so thin, it's hard to tell. I, I have to look here. Um, but we have a little flat that extends no more than, well, I don't know, 20% the length of the blade or so. And then there's a nice swedge, right? Uh, nice tip so you can still puncture if you need to. Really, uh, really good. I mean, it's going to slice the way that you would assume. I think a couple of different reviewers have had this, but this is beautiful. I mean, it is so ready to cut. It's, I'm trying to see how close I can get some of these together. Um, but, uh, yeah, not a, there's no, no question that thing's going to cut and slice and do exactly what you want it to do. And the thumb stud is, like I said, not in the cutting path. So if you want to, um, really get after some thick cardboard, this will do it. Absolutely. Access to the lock bar, I thought is pretty good. Um, he did say he's going to add a little bit of a, an extra chamfer to the lock bar, uh, in the final production versions. And he said he might cut this out a little bit more and create some more access to the, the lock. Um, that's only going to make it better. So that's fine. If he wants to uh, do that, I think that that's, that's great. This has a titanium backspacer and it also will have, I don't know if the prototype has titanium hardware or not, but the, the final production versions will have titanium hardware. So if you've gone to that website and you're like 14C28N and micarta and steel liners that are nested, like the price is okay, but Kubi themselves has incredibly competitive. You know, like they do, you know, basically the same thing for 20 bucks less, but they don't always add titanium hardware and they certainly don't add a titanium backspacer. That's not going to mean a whole lot to everybody, but I, I do have to calculate that in with the price. And so it's kind of nice, right? Um, I would have preferred a different pocket clip, like I've said, but I can't complain too much. Um, so that's nice. The, the titanium hardware and the fact that the liners are not lipped, they are nested, which does require a little bit of extra machining, a little bit of extra this or that, right? It's a better move too. Overall, you're going to have less material, right, for creating the right size of object you want to. Um, so, and you get better balance and stuff like that. So that, uh, that all is, should be calculated in there. Um, he made the right move by putting the lanyard thing in the backspacer and just making a little bar, right? That way it's out of the way for the vast majority of people. Um, those of us who don't use lanyards and we are absolutely the majority. The people who do like lanyards, well, there you go. You still have an option. Um, I'm going to guess, <laughs> I'm just going to guess that the production versions of this knife will uh, have a thing cut out for left-handed um, lefty pocket clips. If that's not planned, you should you should do that. Um, le Left-handed people would like to enjoy this knife. I am almost certain that he's planning to. It's just it's one of those things where I'm like, surely, <laughs> there's, there's, there's no way he's not going to put those two little lines right there in a hole so that the pocket clip can be mounted. I'm just just good thing most the the tip of my or the edge of my thumb is just dead skin, right? Uh, that that edge definitely got me there. It is sharp, um, but um, yeah, I, I'm assuming that. Uh, He's going to have that, um, you know, set up to have a mounting position for the pocket clip for left-handed people, right? So if not, I would do that. Uh, in and out of the pocket, it's a breeze. This can, this thing carries, you know, at the depth that I prefer. I think that's nice. One-handed in and out of the pocket. I don't like these bills that go down. That really bothers me because if you have, uh, you know, if you wear like really thin pocket seam pant material, then fine, it'll get over it, right? Um, but, uh, if you're wearing thick, uh, like if you're wearing like thick jeans or thick work pants, you, you have to fight that. It pinches against it, right? It also, this bill is a grabbing point. If you walk by something, these bills that come forward, they're, they're very grabby. And this is a, a steel, to my knowledge, the pocket clip itself. That actually might, I think it's trying to, I can't tell if it's trying to grab the liners, underneath. I'm pretty sure it is. Actually, I think that clip is titanium. You know what? We're going to check it. I'm going to pull it off of there. And I know people want to tell me just because the magnet's not reacting to it doesn't mean that it's that it is titanium. In the case of the folding knife world at this price point, if the um, magnet does not grab the clip, it absolutely means that it is titanium. Um, they're not going to, we're not going to be making these out of steel. That is a titanium wire clip. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm just trying to get that piece of dead skin off my thumb. That's what that is. So even the, the pocket clip is titanium. The nice thing about clips like this are, you know, they're just insanely simple to, um, <laughs> sometimes the magnetized thing doesn't want to work with you. But these are insanely simple to take uh, apart and put back together. But there you go. That pocket clip, at least on this um, pre-production sample or this prototype sample, is titanium. So, anyways, um, yeah, this is titanium, so it will be. I was about to say it's steel, so it won't be as forgiving, but it's titanium, so it will be. If it catches something, it'll be more forgiving than a steel clip. I still don't like these to be so grabby. I wish they would just end right here on the up, on the upward swoop. That way they kind of lift as you push them into your pocket seam. I know this sounds like a silly thing, but I, I just, for whatever reason, drives me nuts when I'm trying to get my knife back into my pocket and I have to keep pushing and turning and trying to get that clip to go over the pocket seam with one hand, right? I don't like to have to dedicate additional physical and mental energy to use my left hand to hold my pocket, you know, in place so that I can push the knife over. That's such a dumb little thing, right? But um, yeah, that's a, that's a critique that I generally have. So uh, I wish that it would stop right there, but that's, that's okay. It's still, I mean, most people are going to be like, I don't care about that. I, it's just like a really nitpicky thing to get after. So um, the uh, there is a stop pin located in the traditional spot, and there's also some decent shouldering, so that's nice. This does run on bearings and has no blade play up, down, left, or right, which is the case with most Kubi knives. They do a great job with that. Uh, if you're not familiar with Kubi, don't be afraid of them. They do excellent uh, work. Uh, Lockup geometry, let's go ahead and kick it out like we normally would so you can see. Lockup uh, geometry is good. Uh, Lockup percentage is something like 50%, which is fine. No lock rock or anything. No lock stick, no pivot lash. Very consistent, very smooth action in here. Detent is great. And we're looking at perfect centering. So what are these coming in at? They're coming in at $88.99. Kubi and many other companies definitely are creating knives. I mean, sometimes like in the case of Mygiron, they're creating the same thing for $25, maybe $30 less in some cases, right? Uh, these are not uh, being produced at the same volume, though, right? And last I checked, these none of these companies are purely charities, right? So we have to it, – it makes sense to let the person who's designing it and the OEM who's creating it make a little bit of money, right? We can't just – they can't just be making this stuff and just, oh, yeah, we don't profit anything. No, they have to make a little bit. But also, that being said, there are some elements here that justify that a little bit better. The titanium hardware, that's a nice touch. And that's going to go overlooked by some people. Some people are going to say, well, I don't value that. That's fine. You don't have to value it. But it factually does add cost uh, to the creation of this. It absolutely does, right? It's not a massive amount, but it does add cost. We have contoured. Uh, micarta. We have nested steel liners that have been milled out, and we do have 14C28N, right? All Everything here is, you know, when you add it up and you think about it, it's, it's pretty good. I can't say I'm upset about that price tag. I'm not like, oh my god, it's the best deal in the whole world, but it's pretty good. I, I'm really, uh, you know, this is, this is a pretty good package. And on top of that, I mean, the main thing here is this is an excellent EDC design. It, it just definitely is, right? I have no affiliate program set up with Casey Spiron or, or uh, specifically Kubi knives, right? I don't make anything. If you buy this, I don't get to keep this sample, right? It's just good. Uh, you know, not to say that uh, it would be any different if I did get to keep it. It doesn't really change it. I'm always going to tell you what I think. This is good. Um, I recommend it. I think you guys should pre-order this if you're looking for a straightforward EDC. It's not really much of, uh, you know, like collectors and enthusiasts, there's not really going to be much here for you if you're looking for just a good all-around EDC knife that you want to add to your rotation, right? That's a good, you know, price, not not necessarily a price tag that's going to make you cry and just, like, you know, wallow in sadness if you lose it or break it or something, right? It's not a budget knife, but it's not necessarily an expensive knife either. Uh, at a, I mean, generally speaking, right? It depends on who you are and your perspective on that. But this is pretty good. Uh, I, I do recommend this knife. It's going to go in my recommended knives playlist. I think the production versions with the changes will only be better. My two big things, right? Make sure we have a spot for lefties and uh, widen out those thumb studs, round them off a bit. I think that might be just a little bit better. 
that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks so much again to Casey Spire and Knives Fast for sending this in for me to take a look at. This goes to uh, the knife, knife Junkie, I think. It goes to Bob next. So make sure you guys check out his channel. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.